Uh, I'll be talking about the importance of vaccine in general and why we should support research in vaccine. And in particular, also, I will talk about uh, what has been my research group contribution in the, uh, uh, fighting the uh, new uh, uh, um, COVID-19 pandemic. But I'll start my pitch by sharing with you a good news and a bad news. Well, the good news is that uh, uh, with uh, good vaccines, we are already saving three, up to 3 million lives per year. And this is already a remarkable, fantastic news. But on the dark side is that we are not doing enough yet. And in fact, during the eight minutes uh, that I've been given to give this talk today, 24 more children will die because of a lack of vaccines. So point is, are we doing great? Yes. Can we do, uh, uh, are we doing enough? No, there is still more work to do. Vaccines are important and I think all of us has realized this. If there is one teeny tiny thing that this uh, pandemic has reminded us has been the importance of having a vaccine. Everybody, and I bet everybody also at home, has thought at least once during this lockdown, damn it, if we had a vaccine and we could just, you know, uh, uh, ignore this lockdown. So vaccines are important and research on vaccines should not be uh, 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 forbidden just because we don't see the disease anymore, because diseases are there. Now, I am, as I said, I'm a professor at the University of Helsinki, and uh, uh, this is my research group. We have been involved in development of uh, vaccine for cancers for about a decade nowadays. You all know that uh, cancer is a very, very, very fast-moving disease. It, uh, it changes a lot, and it changes very rapidly. So. A common feature to all the platforms that we have developed uh, uh, for cancer vaccines is rapidity and adaptabilities. So our vaccine platform for cancer, they need to be made to be rapidly adaptable to the change of cancer. These features, which are super useful in cancer, we never thought that they were very useful to fight infectious disease. I mean, you can argue, yeah, pathogens change. That's true, they change. But they don't change as fast as a tumor does. So we always thought, well, this is probably not, uh, uh, not, not, not very important until we start to see this. There was a small spillover of a new coronavirus that spilled from an intermediate host, went to a human, and then start going from human to human. And uh, uh, it looked like small contained epidemia. And then very, very rapidly start to grow, as you can follow now on this blue uh, balls, start to grow and start to spread. And it, before we could realize this was a huge pandemic. It was March 13 when we sat down together at IVT Lab and we decided we got to do something here. Because also because by looking at this map, it really looked like a cancer spreading, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 within the heart. So we had to do something. So we sat down and we started to think probably what we thought it was not very useful, which is our rapidity and adaptability of our vaccines. Actually, it is quite useful during viral outbreak. It is quite useful when you have a virus that is a virus epidemic that is very, very, very rapidly moving into a pandemic. So why don't we just adapt our technologies that we have developed for cancer to the new coronavirus uh, uh, pandemic and to, to, to COVID-19? So we decided to, uh, to do that and to uh, basically contribute to provide a multi-target, thermostable, enhanced uh, anti-COVID-19 vaccine. How we did that? Well, we follow the same process that we usually follow when we do cancer vaccine. First, you need to identify the weak point of the cancer. In this case, the weak point of the virus. The Achilles heels that you can uh, use in order to attack the virus and destroy it. To do that, we have adapted, we have developed a software called HEX. 
Hex, what Hex does, it walks through the viral genome and viral proteome, so basically all the viral components, in order to find those weak points. Once you have identified those weak points, the one that you can use to target to destroy the virus, then we had the second problem, the second step. How do we incorporate these weak parts of the virus into existing vaccines? Why existing vaccines? Because we wanted to go to clinic as fast as possible to, 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 to make something good. Uh, to do that, we developed a technology that we called Peptivac, basically adapted from our uh, cancer technology. What Peptivac does, oh, sorry, uh, takes this uh, weak point of the virus and uh, in, in matters of minutes incorporate those weak parts of the coronavirus on top of existing vaccines. Now, since the majority of those vaccines, I would say probably about 95% uh, of the existing vaccine in clinical trial already are targeting a single protein of the coronavirus, which is the spike protein, by incorporating those weak parts on top of those vaccines, we will be able to multi-target, to develop a multi-target vaccine that can target not only the spike, but also all the other weak points that we have identified and we have attached and incorporated onto the surface of these existing vaccines. But we wanted to do something even more. We wanted to be able to actually formulate and package these vaccines uh, in an easy way in order to be shipped around the globe without the need of, uh, um, of the cold chain, which is a big problem in underdeveloped countries. To do that, we have uh, actually taken a project that we started already a few years ago uh, in my lab, which we call Globvac. In this project, we have screens uh, hundreds of different uh, highly sustainable cheap product uh, to find the ones that are natural product, to find the one that actually can preserve the virus even at high temperature. So, in conclusion, what we have done, if you want to know, we have developed a new software in order to uh, uh, find out what are the weak points of the coronavirus. We have adapted our cancer technology, uh, uh, Peptigrad, into Peptivac in order to incorporate those weak parts of the coronavirus on top of these existing vaccines that are already in clinic, that are under development, that will be in clinic one day. And third, we have developed a new formulation strategy that will allow us to pack this vaccine and ship it around the globe without the need of the cold chain. So hopefully the next time that I will be invited to give, a talk, to give a talk like this, I can only share with you the good news and I won't have any bad news to share with you. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have enjoyed as much as I did giving the talk and uh, uh, I'm very happy to take your questions. <laughs> Thank you, Philip Vincent Joe. You're welcome. Um, well, we got uh, plenty of uh, questions from our audience. Uh, we have a time for a couple of them. Um, one of them is about, uh, is it possible that COVID-19 hides or goes latent in some kind of latent mode in our bodies? So they, uh, this virus could uh, reactivate, for example, when we are stressed or just wait for a long time in our bodies. To be honest, everything is possible. I, if, if there is one thing that I've learned in the last couple of months, that we know very, very little about this virus, and uh, there is a lot to learn. So uh, everything is possible and nothing is excluded. I'm not aware of, of this, uh, uh, but, uh, but it could be you know, possible. Uh, although, uh, I mean, I, I found it not, not, not really, but... but Yes, I would not exclude anything. We just don't know. And that's the reason why we should study it. Yeah. Uh, what about, uh, is it, um, 
what are the ways that uh, COVID-19 uh, hides or dodges our immune system? We don't know yet. We only know that uh, this virus is very, very good in hiding. And that's the reason why also we should pay extra attention to actually... Uh, um, uh, um, how do you say, uh, to, to find out what are the parts that at the end of the day in recovered patients have been the one that the immune system of the patients has hit the most. Because those are the weak part and those are the parts that we should use in developing our vaccines. Those could be, I mean, COVID-19 and SARS-CoV-2 could be one of the cases where the vaccine will work even better than the infectious per se. I mean, usually the best, you know, the best immunity you build up when you get really infected. Uh, uh, and usually vaccine gives you very good uh, you know, immunity, but not as high. But this could be the case with the vaccines that us and many others are developing could be the case where we can build up even a better immunity. Okay. Uh, uh, the viruses uh, tend to mutate in yes. time. Uh, is it possible when you're uh, researching and doing a new vaccine that uh, you take care, somehow you prepare for the next mutation yeah. already? I, I, I'll tell you a secret. We, have, <laughs> we, we, we were doing this exercise with uh, some of my postdocs and collaborators uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we have uh, found out that, well, they, they, they called me and they asked me, well, can, we're doing the alignment of all the sequence of these viruses, and I said, well, how many? And they go like, we're 32,000. Uh, and I said, well, but the, all the coronaviruses? No, 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 just this one. Oh. So it has mutated. <laughs> according to what they told me, already 32,000 time, times. Uh, 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 but, but fortunately, all the parts that we have identified are not really involved in this mutation. And obviously, the, this mutation has not really given any difference into, into the virus. It doesn't make any, basically any difference. But just to say that the virus mutates a lot, but it does not mutate in the crucial part so that it can change its behavior. And that's the most important part. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, then we have one uh, question still. Um, how long will the vaccine uh, be preserved at the room temperature by the Globvac technology? Well, uh, we have, uh, of course, only uh, 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 limited amount of data from our lab where we do basically stress test. So we basically, you know, kind of try to boil the vaccine or, or, or put it at, you know, 50 or 60 or 70 degrees. Uh, uh, so... I think the longest we have gone, it's two months, uh, uh, but obviously uh, these two months is, is not really at 30 degrees, but it's a little bit more on higher uh, temperature kind of. I mean, it's, it's a little bit more stressed. Okay. Hey, Vince, so I don't know. Thank you so much for <laughs> yeah, your insight. Welcome. It was fantastic. Thank you. <laughs>